Hey guys, Cyrus Switz here. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick little recap, um, just just to give some education to this this trade here. Uh, we originally got this plus plus two buy right here. Um, I highlighted here as the buy entry. So we traded this one till it closed within the EMA, which is this candle right here. That's our purple line, as we always said. Purple over gold. Breakout. It's a buy gold over purple sell it's a short so when this candle close right here on the purple we're getting ready to, to, to sell and this one here flushed we're out and then we get the alert here to close this trade anyway so you had a nice little buy here nice little trade here then we entered the next trade here this one was a much shorter trade we entered this trade right here was the buy entry um, I just was able to to alert this in Crypto Zombies chat as I just got home and saw that this one wasn't working out as well. So here it is. Um, I said, looks like we're coming out the squeeze into negative energy and a pullback on the 15 minute. Be mindful. So here's the squeeze. So this is good squeeze for us. We're buying this. So when we bought this, it was squeezing in. Now the energy is coming out. So we're exiting this. Uh, let's move forward to a little later in the time frame. As you can see, the energy is coming out. We're about to flip on the energy. And we have the alert here to close this trade. So if you waited for the alert to close the trade, you're going to take a loss on this last entry here. This is why we always close as soon as the candle comes within the EMA. So we were closing here, definitely closing here. Okay. Um, I was asked if I was going to be shorting this. I would have shorted this had I been paying attention earlier what I would have done is I would have set up my trade here knowing that we already had our first bearish short idea meaning that this is possibly coming to a top and I would have set my stop loss here and that would have enabled me on this candle wick here or this candle wick here for sure to have got stopped out and then I would have been ready to take the short once we got this potential for a trade to reverse and I would have been shorting probably into this spike, definitely into this one. I didn't short this because I wasn't set up to short. I was still long at the time and I had just gotten out my long position. So let's flip this back here so you can see it again. So this here is the, the trade. This is the big one. We got this one. It was nice. It grinded for us. When we got in this one, it didn't grind as well. So as I was alerting this and the time was 17 22 and 59 seconds and 1741 and 23 seconds this is where we're at now now fast forwarding this to now live this is the 15 minute chart and this here is all is the five minute chart as you can see the 15 minute chart we have our exit here it's telling us to sell it's telling us that a short opportunity is coming up now as a negative one short these have usually worked out for at least a little bit of a pullback now looking at this here on the five minute it's more intuitive so we would have got out of the trade here a lot better because it's just um, it's a it's three times as many alerts in in the 15 minute candle because it's five minutes so we got a hair we would have got short as i said a negative one short is usually paid off and it was sitting on the golden dump line remember guys Gold over purple is a short. So it's sitting on the golden dump line. It flipped. Gold is now over purple. And it's a short. And it's still selling off right now. That was a 200 Oh, well, it's still selling off. $200 move. Um, 175 And it's still selling off. And you can see from the energy here that we're still flowing. So this is what I do. Um... To run it up I, I like trading view for this is very intuitive um, it lets me set up my charts very well and I mean like I can put two charts onto the same page so it's 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 fantastic for that so I can watch the 15 minute with the five minute, and then obviously I'm gonna have the bigger time frame um, to watch the trade in but I could even put this up to the four hour with with the 15 so I can see context and then the actual chart that I'm trading would be on the bigger screen um i run in eight monitors 
a horizontal with two on each side vertical, so 12 in total. Oh, look at that energy just came in. And look at that dump. There we go. That was almost 60 bucks. That was almost a $60 dump on top of what we were. So we're looking about 250 now. To 225 to 250 depending where you would have gotten in on this short so I missed it I wasn't set up to do this um, as you can see a lot of a lot of volume came in which means a lot of people who were short probably adding their shorts from here have closed out the trade it didn't quite hit the weekly and that's what these orange dots is the weekly that would be your the target for the short uh, I would definitely say that would be the target for the short um, the red and the green areas you see here are based on the Fibonacci's. So we definitely hit that first, the first target being this Fib, but I would definitely be holding for this second target. And what I do is when I trade is I look to close 75% of my position at first target. When I hit second target, I used to close, I like to close another 75%. And the reason for this is the maker taker fees. So maker taker fees are oh getting a little crazy over here. Let's just reset this. Let's span that back out. So maker taker fees are basically it's basically three times as much as you get paid for being a maker is what you're gonna pay for being a taker. So if you close 75% of your position, that's three quarters, then if you are forced to be a taker on that last quarter your fees are going to take from the other fees. It's not going to take from your actual profit on the trade. And the reason where this gets um, more important is when you start dealing with large leverage. Like if you're under, um, say, 8 to 10 leverage, it's not it's not too bad. But once you start getting 16 to, to, to 25, even if you're going to if you're going to go high and go 50, 50 leverage, that make or take or fee alone can hurt you on the trade because you're trading more leverage than you are actual BTC in the trade. So your fees are based on the leverage, not the BTC that your profit will be based on. So just something to keep in mind. Um, like I said, just giving you a quick little uh, wrap on this so people can see how this, this traded out. So we had the, buy, the plus two buy here on the 15 minute, which is coinciding with about 130 so 130 would have had you right around here where we had the long and that's what i was telling other people is that with ninja scalper is when you have a plus two that is a buy for that time frame when you have a long that's a buy for dca or something else on another time frame as you can see here we have this long entry here at one 135 and it coincides with long entry here for for the buy it's just how how the system works so that was along for another time frame this is the plus two buy for this time frame and this is the exit the trade based on that the sell the short the bearish idea and the sell-off that we're into now and bring this here Let me just get rid of this, fit the data of the screen. I don't know why it does that. It annoys me when it does that. So here's the buy. We had the trade, the exit, the short, small pullback, just to the dump line. It didn't stay underneath the dump line. And then the buy here was on the dump line support. We had the bearish idea, meaning this is possibly topping out. The bull versus bear setup, which means it's a doji indecision. We don't want to be stuck in that. Close the trade was alerted here. We already should have been out because this is in the EMAs. The sell, the short, and then as I was telling you guys, we had that nice $60 dump on top of the $175 to $200 that it was. So a nice $225 to, to, to $250. we we'll just say $250 because you're never going to catch the bottom. You're never going to catch the top. Like... There's no way that I would have known that, well, I suppose you got this green this green line coming in. So we would have had 64, but I wasn't looking at that when I was talking earlier. I was looking more for this target here, 
So there's no way I would have known that this would have not touched it. But I guess I could have aimed for it in between the exact middle between both of these. And then that would have got me out perfectly at the very bottom. But again, here's the volume as it comes in. As you can see the volume. It's bigger than any other area. And that's it. So hopefully this is helpful, meaningful uh, breakdown of how I look to use Ninja Scalper as a guide. Um, it's not a one-shot trade-all. It's just a guide to give you guys an entry that you might have missed something or just to make you think, about, okay, well, if this is saying this, am I still confident in my trade on the time frame that I'm trading? So, it's been Osiris Twitch for Send Trading out.